Good evening, everybody. This is Congressman Doug Collins uh, calling on our town hall tonight, our live telephone town hall. I was just thinking as I was the music hold was going off, I was thinking this is probably about our 30, 31st time over the last four years that we've been able to gather on a, uh, an evening and talk about things that are going on not only in Washington, D.C., but also uh, in the district as well. It's been a, uh, an exciting week up here. We've got a lot of things moving on our health care front. We've got a lot of other issues that we've been working uh, back close to home. As we get started here, many of you have already figured it out. The way you actually uh, ask a question is star three. Uh, star three is the way you get a, a question answered. Also, I always want to say if you have a question that may not concern the uh, town hall tonight, you may not uh, want to ask or you want to ask it maybe with one of my associates, then you can call our district office at 770-297-3388. So as we're getting your calls, I also want to say is there's a misperception sometimes. I had somebody ask me one time, well, Doug, you have all these uh, callers, and I have to talk to somebody before I talk to you. Well, that's simply so we can line up the questions, and I know where I can get to them next. We take as many phone calls as we possibly can. The people you talk to are actually part of my staff, and they are helping me tonight to get all our calls and we'll take as many questions as we uh, possibly can over the next time that we're uh, together. A lot of you ask uh, very similar questions, so we'll answer those as, as we go along. But while we're waiting on some more people to join us, and we've got a, a large number of uh, the district joining us uh, tonight and being a part of this call, we're going to. I want to just catch you up to date on a few things that are uh, have been going on in Washington, D.C. Of course, we're going to talk health care. I know that that will be a, a, a topic that many will want to talk about. We've started exactly what we promised. The President uh, and the House uh, Republicans have began the process of repealing and replacing Obamacare, cutting a trillion dollars in taxes, and beginning to put together a health care plan that gives flexibility to states, that improves uh, quality of health care, and also begins to bend the cost curve. Working with our states, working with um, the folks that uh, we see what has been wrong over the past uh, few years under Obamacare, and we're looking to uh, make sure that we have folks that are having access to affordable, quality health care, and that is uh, something that we, will, I'm sure we'll be talking about as time goes on uh, tonight. These are uh, all conservative ideas. These are things that we've put forward many times, and we're looking forward to, to moving those forward and getting those to the Senate and eventually to the President's desk to fulfill not only the promises we made, but also the promises that the President has uh, set forth over the last little bit. But always it's good to talk about some also other local issues we're working on. I know that many of you uh, have contacted our office in the past over Windstream. Uh, Windstream, of course, receives federal uh, funds. That's why we look to hold them accountable, especially when we get so many phone calls uh, about the effectiveness of rural broadband and how their uh, services are affecting you and your daily life and businesses. If you have any uh, questions about those, uh, of course, we can talk about that tonight, or we can also have uh, folks in our district office at 770-297-3388 uh, be a part of that. Another issue that I want, especially for our folks who are over in Hart, Stevens, Franklin, and Elbert County, we're working on Orphan County issue. I uh, had a great uh, opportunity to talk with the uh, our local papers over there the other day, this is again dealing with satellite television who are getting South Carolina TV and, and news instead of Georgia. Uh, we got that language put into the bill a couple of years ago that allows those counties to uh, opt out and decide which DMA they want to be a part of. They want to hear from Atlanta or they want to hear from South Carolina. And some of that process has already started in other parts of the country, and we're working forward to, to having that process start here. Also, uh, sort of a local concern, but I know there's some big canoe callers on tonight, and we have heard uh, the concerns about your packages being delivered, and we're working on with the Postal Service uh, for those who have addressed, and we're going to keep you updated on that. As always, as well, as, as we go into spring, uh, Corps of Engineers, we're working with the Corps on many different projects, both on Hartwell and Lanier, and, and working uh, to deal with those that we've went through and, and the successes that we've had, rolling back irrigation rules and other things that we have worked on with the Corps of Engineers. Uh, we're looking for productive relationships so it maintains those wonderful resources we have in uh, northeast Georgia. Uh, one other thing I want to start before we start taking questions, and we're starting to get those questions lined up here, is I'd like to talk to you about, and we have a lot of calls about folks who want to come to Washington, D.C. to take in the sights and sounds of Washington, D.C., to uh, visit our uh, nation's monuments, our museums, and also I am so proud to announce that the First Lady of the United States last week uh, began the process, and this week it started with tours at the White House again. So if you've been waiting for tours at the White House, you're now able to get those tours. Call our office, and we'll be happy to start uh, working to set those up for the spring uh, break season and also the summer coming up. To do that, you'd call 202-225-9893, 
and just ask for someone in our office, tell them that you want to talk about tours. And if you're up here and don't come by and see me and get a picture, I will be uh, just upset. So I want you to come by and see us as we go along, uh, as we have a great time up here in D.C. Doing the people's business, but always remembering the people's business is also being about uh, Washington, D.C. And, and a capital that remembers the folks when you come up here to visit. So we want you to be a part of that as well. Um, as we go along, we again, got questions already on the line. We're working uh, through those. Folks you're talking to are my staff, and we're going to uh, get started tonight as we go forward. Uh, looking ahead, let's start with questions tonight. And the first question, let's go to Billy Jean and Helen. Billy? Good evening, Congress Congressman Collins. How are you? I'm great, buddy. How are you tonight? How's Helen? I'm, I'm I, it's it's uh, warm right now, but it's going talking about some snow this Saturday night. Uh, well, that's I what I was hearing. Much. I don't. And probably in a good dusting, probably. <laughs> right, right. Congressman Collin, I know you have worked very. You and your staff both worked very uh, hard on the worst name in Georgia. And that's Windstream. I know you've met with the CEO a couple of times at least, or maybe more. And they promised you the world, and I know that they set up, promised you, and they set up a task force in Cornelia and brought down a Mr. Brookshire to operate that and supposed to get on the ball and help the residents and the business owners in North Georgia up here in several counties. And what I'd like to ask you, are you on any type of congressional committee that, and is, is it humanly possible, legal or whatever, that if you are or if not, if you know another congressman on a, that committee that regulates the telecom industry, that could, is it legal or do y'all have the authority to start a congressional investigation against them because they receive millions and millions and millions and millions of do taxpayers' do dollars and did not do what they're supposed to. They've lied to you. They've lied to the residents and the business owners. And every time my business internet goes out and if it's down, for several hours, I am losing hundreds and hundreds of dollars in a third biggest tourist town in Georgia. The tourists don't understand when they come in my business and I say the internet's down and been down for five hours. I can't take your debit or credit cards. But most of ninety nine percent of your tourists when they visit Ellen are using debit and credit cards, and yeah. it is. It, we lose a lot of money. Are there any kind of congressional investigation for maybe where they've done criminal activity on the way they spent the taxpayers' money that was given in them grants, uh, millions and millions of dollars given to them? Well, Billy, that's the, one of the things we're working on right now. Is is not uh, you know from the you know the thing is they're spending the money. The problem is is we don't think they're spending it you know completely the way that it was intended to be spending. They're spending it in areas in which you know they can roughly say here's where we're enlarging the market, and we've been dealing with that uh, as we go forward. We're right now we're looking at other ways to make the funds available to other providers in the area that not just so that there's a monopoly of the funds through Windstream. We're working uh, to provide other access points uh, that can be uh, utilized through. Uh, federal dollars, and really just to uh, uh, embrace a, a broadband possibility for our, our dear district, because without the broadband possibility, then we're having, uh, you know, as you said, your businesses are having trouble. We're going through that. We're using every means possible right now to uh, bring to account and hold accountable for that. But the biggest issue right now is we just believe that sunshine is a great disinfector. We're going to still talk about this. And um, the, you know, issue is that we come forward is, uh, you know, to work sure and make sure that we have the ability to do uh, what we can. So we're going to continue that. But, Bill, I'd also encourage you to call my local office, 770-297-3388. Talk to uh, my staff down there. We'd love to hear and maybe get you some more help on that, okay? I, I've been talking with him, Congressman. I've talked to several of your staff, including Super. your chief staff, and he even invited me to one of the meetings, but then the CEO didn't want me to attend one of your meetings with him down <laughs> in Gainesville. And because he's scared. One other quick question. Okay, okay. real quick. I got if a lot of questions help, tonight. If you could help have a sham electric, they're in the process now of putting wireless fiber in Helen now. If you could help them get grant money to work other counties around, I would greatly appreciate your help with trying to help have a sham electric in the fiber optic system. All right. Well, Billy, we'll do that because that's one of the things we're trying to open up. You have a great night for me tonight uh, as we go forward. We're definitely looking at that. Um, next question is, uh, we're going to have, because we've got a lot of uh, questions coming in on um, uh, our uh, health care uh, bill, and this is our next question up on this, is from Bob in Dahlonega. Bob, you there? Yes. Hey, Bob, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing well. I Super. am very ready to see this bill brought up 
to repeal Obamacare that was sent to Obama. It's already done. It doesn't take a PowerPoint presentation. My understanding is 100% of the Republican side voted for it. Let's send it up. It's got problems, but let's fix them after we get the job done. We don't need any more foot dragging or explanations. Yeah, well, there's no foot dragging explanation going on, Bob. The, the bill, the 2015 bill, is in this uh, package. It's going to be sent to the president. President Trump is behind this. He is very supportive of the process in which we're going through right now because that 2015 bill is in there. And we're going to be repealing the taxes, we're going to be putting this together, and we're going to be putting together what we promised and what the president promised was a smooth transition so that we can begin the process of rebuilding this disaster called Obamacare and take care of our health care system and get government out of the way. Um, so, you, you know, for, for your first party question, that bill is going to the thing, we're going to defund Planned Parenthood, we're going to do the things that we did uh, last year in the 2015 bill, while at the same time, Using the process, and you know, and look, this isn't a PowerPoint presentation. This is a simple truth of where we have to operate in. There is a part that we can do through reconciliation, which includes the 2015 bill, and also it takes care of, it, of an entitlement reform of Medicaid. That's something that hadn't happened in over 20 plus years up here. And then also, like I said, does the other things. Then we've got the other parts with Secretary Price is going to work on at HHS, and then plus other bills that we're going to be passing that have to have 60 votes in the Senate. So this is a process. It just simply just simply saying that we're going to destroy it. I had somebody ask me the other day, well, just simply, you know, at this point, you know, just tear it all up and start over from where it was before Obama became president. Well, there's one problem. That system doesn't exist anymore because he, the Obamacare wrecked what was there so badly that it doesn't exist. So we're going to get this through. I guarantee you within the next couple of weeks, it's going to be taken up in the House. We moved forward already last night. The two committees have reported it. It's going to the Budget Committee next week. This is all above board, in order. Everybody has their opportunity to talk about it, and then it will be coming to the floor of the House, going to the Senate. Then it's on the Senate uh, to pass it and send it on to the President. The President is fully engaged, and we're looking forward to seeing this done, Bob. Well, I just hope that you can have better progress with this than you do about getting this ethanol out of my gasoline. <laughs> Bob, I think the only thing that the ethanol and the gasoline is for is for small engine repair shops. That's about all I've ever seen it for. That's our that's our next one. We got to. I never asked for this. Nobody yep. I know asked for it, and you guys can't seem to get it out. Yeah, well, that, uh, believe me, uh, we're, that, uh, we've got to convince the president. He talked about that a little bit the other day. So we're going to continue to, to look at it. Bob, have a great night. Keep uh, Delonica running, okay? We're All right. Next question is, let's go to, um, I believe this is Molly. Yes, Molly, sir. you're from Gainesville. How are you doing tonight? I am fine, thank you. <clears throat> Super. What part of Gainesville are you from? Uh, down near Chestnut Mountain. Oh, outstanding. I used to pastor Chicopee Baptist Church down there. So and I've got a lot of good friends in that part of the world. What's your question tonight? Well, my question, um, in reality, I am not affected because I'm on Medicare, which is yes. actually a pretty good <laughs> method of providing health care. Yeah. However, I keep hearing with the new plan that people will have access. Now, they might not still have insurance, but they will have access. And if they don't have insurance, then they can always go to the emergency room. And my question is the economics of that, because you have people with um, chronic conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, where if they have the medication and the doctor's visits that they need, they can keep those under control. But if they don't, then the high blood pressure is a stroke and where now you have and the emergency room, and, and okay, now that's, that's going to taxpayers, which um, increases the cost for hospitals and everything else besides yeah. then, you know, and then they have, they're not working anymore, so their families have problems. Or you have the diabetic who loses their vision, or they have the heart attack, right. or the sores in their feet, so and, and amputations, which seems to me would be significantly more expensive going to the emergency room and gets to be an emergency rather than making sure people had the uh, maintenance care that they needed. And that doesn't yep. seem to be in the bill. Well, it is in the bill because we've said that the the process is where the you, what you've been talking about is pre-existing conditions, and we have uh, the president and the and the House Republicans have been working with pre-existing conditions. They're covered uh, in this plan. That, well, they're, uh, people they're, are not going not going to lose their insurance over that. They're they're covered, 
But yep. you have the people who, because of their pre-existing conditions from everything, now there I'm, I'm seeing theirs will be more expensive. Now, if they are low enough income, they'll have Medicaid or some something. But then you get to the people who were there kind of on that edge part where they aren't getting enough rebates and their other and they they have that minimum wage job. They have that fifteen maybe even, you know, ten dollar an hour job. Yeah. All well, they the get- problem the part of the problem you got right now with that in that condition that you gave right now, and this is the very one of the very reasons that we're making, you know, this as affordable is those jobs that you just talked about can't afford Obamacare either. What they can afford is the premium possibly for a month. And what I've had to deal with with several in my office and all across the country is we've had folks who can take the uh, – they get the subsidy on the early premium, but when they look at their co-pays and deductibles, it might as well be out of reach for them. So what we're trying to do is – and what we're working with the states to do is put these you know, folks with these pre-existing conditions, the needs that they have, and give them affordable health care that they can actually purchase and use throughout. Affordable health care with a low premium is not affordable if you can't use it uh, for – the uh the rest of the of the the plan so this is what we're working on there and that's you know that's one of the the scare tactics is being used is that people will be kicked off that's not what's happening in this plan no i i am going with what i've seen from your plan that 10 million people who currently have health care will possibly not be able to afford health care or have health have health care yep. and so those well, tend to be the people who have health problems. So. Well, I think, you know, this is where, like I said, we're working, uh, you know, to do this. I think the best thing is for everybody and, and from, uh, you know, not believing news reports, especially for those who want to say that we're losing the, the folks in health care, is just read the bill.gop. It's right there. People can go to it, and they can see what we're doing and how we're working uh, to make this affordable. Miss Molly, I appreciate the questions tonight, and you have a great night, okay? Thank you. All right. Next question here is from Harry in Blairsville. Harry, Harry, you there? Yes, sir. Good evening, Doug. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. It's good to talk to you. Is Blairsville getting still warm or is it starting to cool off yet? Well, it's nice to get cool in the evenings and nice and pretty in the daytime. Oh, that's always a good way to be. What's your question, Harry? um, Well, first off, I want to thank you for holding this phone forum. Um, you, You call me all the time and I don't often participate but thank you i appreciate it my question tonight is um how is the tax credit with the new republican plan different from the uh, subsidy that the obama uh, care offered as a drain on the uh, national debt yep well that's a great question and, and the, there's several things there the one the tax these tax credits are mean tested they're based on they're only based on age unlike the obamacare subsidies which were just sort of given away these refundable tax credits will actually help to end the dependency on uh, entitlement programs by helping people get off the social welfare programs by ensuring that they can have affordable health care in the private market. This is dealing off of the tax uh, folks for actually people who are working. This is not dealing with simply saying, here's what we're going to give you, not based on anything else. And these ex- the excess credit amounts can be deposited actually into individuals' health savings accounts, which actually help them even further, like buying over-the-counter medicines and things like that, that uh, – you know, right now they're not able to do. So that the big difference is, for, is from the fact that we're using tax credits from those that are working. They're not just simply across the board uh, in this, and uh, they're also capped starting at $75,000. So we're trying to provide the individual market in areas right now that, that currently uh, don't have that. And I think this is, uh, you know, the better way to go about it. We want people to be able to, who are working, who are trying to make it work, use that tax credit, the money that they have, to not be on an entitlement, but actually have to be able to use that money for uh, health care as we come. Tax credits, well, you know, um, really are, are not a new entitlement in this process. So that's where we're looking at it as we go forward. How does it affect the, the overall debt, though? Is it uh, negative or is it um, neutral? It does, it, from, does... from the perspective of the, the tax credits itself, is, is we're taking and using that tax credit, the tax monies that would have been back from them instead of a deduction that many people couldn't use, we're actually making a refundable tax credit, which, again, from our uh, perspective is um, you know making sure that we're not in, ex- exploding the debt, we're not creating an entitlement from which the money comes and, and is not uh, you know tested or means tested in our perspective. And that's why the the budget numbers are coming back, and that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Okay, well, good. Second, uh, deeper question is, do people have a right to health care? I mean, do I have a right to a Mercedes, or do I have a right to plastic surgery, 
or as a regular guy, do I pick the doctor or the car that really suits my budget? And um, if I don't choose to be healthy and do healthy things, shouldn't I benefit? You know, I mean, that would be a um, – how do I explain that part? Um, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to have worse health. Um, yep. God will – God. God's in control, but really, if you're healthy, you act healthy, you eat healthy, um, why do you have to pay for the rest of the folks that don't? Well, I think that's been that's the whole process. Of, you know, one of the things that's always been about uh, insurance, no matter whether it's health care or working with property casual, there's that, the, the issue is how do you balance the cost for, for everyone and everyone pay in um, as, they come, as they go forward. And I think one of the things that we need to do in, in these policies and plans and insurance companies that are seeing this is encouraging people to take care of themselves, encouraging them to get the pre-screenings, encouraging them to, to be a part of, of working uh, to make themselves healthier so that they can live a long and productive life. And Harry, those are the kind of things we want people to have access to the, the health care that provides that they want to get so that they can take care of themselves and not be uh, a drain and simply going to our um, uh go forward in uh, looking at, uh, you know, ways that drain on the economy. And that's what we're going to be working for, and we uh, are going to continue that. So, Harry, I appreciate it. Have a good night in Blairsville, okay? All right. Uh, next uh, caller here, and especially, like I said, if you have a uh, call, it's star three on your phone. Star three on your phone, and like I said, if you if you many times I got folks who agree and uh, folks who disagree, we always take those calls. If you got questions, and Tom and L J, looks like uh, we have a question that you've got tonight. How's things in L J? Oh, they're wonderful right here. Thank you very much for taking my call. Good time. It's always always good to take calls. Yes. What you got? My tonight? question is this: I'm I'm aware of the fact that Freedom Works, as opposed to the existing plan that's been put forward by. Um, Ryan, and I understand that you do not belong to the Freedom Works. Can you explain your position and why you do not belong to it? Okay, well, Freedom Works is an organization that's not a part of Congress. So, um, they're, yeah, they're an organization, I mean, like a lot of organizations in life. I think the interesting thing here is, number one, this is the president's plan as well. And I think he is the one you know, supporting this. He's the one that laid out the, the, the vision and the guidelines as we're working for this you know, last week in his joint address. I think the interesting thing is I'm wanting to know why Freedom Works doesn't support ending Obamacare. My question would be is why are you not supporting ending the trillion dollars worth of taxes and defunding Planned Parenthood and beginning to re- to overhaul uh, Medicaid and beginning to do these things? Are there different aspects that we can work on and, and the committees have been working on that process? Yeah, there always is those kind of, of issues, but um, the uh, issue that we have to deal with is what is best in the long term, given the fact that Obamacare destroyed our health care system and our individual market by making it a government uh, control system, and we're in the process of taking it back over and saying, look, we're not going to take it from Washington, D.C. We're going to put the hands of the, uh, the power back to the, to the markets and folks that they can access affordable health care. We can have differences of agreement on how to do that, but at this point, my question is, is why aren't we moving forward doing what we promised, which was taking and repealing Obamacare, and as the president said, providing a market and a transition for those that were affected uh, so that we can move forward restoring the markets and continuing to have a, a health care system that all can participate in. Okay, Dave, you're talking real fast. Let me explain. Okay, I'm Doug. <laughs> Freedom Works is not an outside organization. It is a bunch of representatives. And oh, you're talking about the Freedom Caucus. Yeah. I know. I, I, yeah, Freedom Works is an outside organization. The House Freedom Caucus is a bunch of friends of mine. Right. Well, why are you not yeah. a member of that? Mm, mainly because I, part, I'm a member of Congress that represents the 9th District. I, I'm, I'm a little more conservative than some of those guys. No, I don't think you are. Well, I'm sorry, Tom. You're confusing a lot <laughs> I, of issues. You guys are you're, – you're a mainstream Republican. I put you in the same category as people like – uh, some of the senators who are opposed to Obama, uh, who were then make it sound like they are for Trump, but they are not. You guys are not supporting the things that we elected y'all to do. Okay, what have I not supported, Tom? I'm repealing and replacing Obamacare. I'm supporting the president, Donald Trump's plan. What am I not supporting? 
He's not. Trump has not put forth this plan. He needs to bring you guys, along with the rest of the people that are opposed to this, into an office, lock you into a room, and say, nobody leaves here until we get settled on what this is supposed to be. Well, well, Tom, I only go, I go by what a man says, and if you disagree with me, that's fine. I appreciate you being a part of this call, but I would encourage you to go back and see what the president said over the last few days and, uh, and, and, and look at it. I'm very familiar with Steve Brannon. I've listened to him for years. I support him and a lot of the things he's doing. And I see you guys are... I support the president. I didn't elect Steve Brannon. I I support the president. You're trying to pull the wool over the president's eyes. (laughs) Have you ever met Donald Trump? No. Okay, I have. I don't think you're going to pull the wool over Donald Trump's eyes. I appreciate the concern, Tom, but but this president is very active, and he's very involved in this process. And if you can ask any of the groups. You guys are not being up front with him. How do you know? Don, what are we not being up front about, Tom? You're not. You're trying to. Okay, no, you're just saying I'm not. What are we not being up front about? Y'all are not. You are sneaking in all kinds of stuff (laughs) that were part of the Obama plan. And you, you're going to put it in there, and if you guys do not do what you're supposed to do and be conservative like you should be, you're going to all wind up going down in defeat in 2020. Well, okay. Uh, Tom, I appreciate that. I'm up for re-election in 2018. I look forward to sharing this plan in 2018. And, I'm so you know, sorry gonna... that you beat that lady that you ran against about four years ago. She was one hell of a good person. Well, Martha's a dear friend of mine who actually endorsed me in my last election. So I do appreciate your yeah, time. Have a great time in LJ, okay? Yeah. Take care. Have a good night. All right. As you can see, we take all kinds of calls. I appreciate Tom calling. He can call any time uh, that he likes uh, as we go forward. Let's see. What else um, as we go forward here? Um Let's see, Catherine in Jasper. Catherine, what's going on in Jasper tonight? Well, thank you for taking my call, Representative Collins. Um, no problem. It's always good to talk to people, even I, people who even people who wanted me defeated a few years ago. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, um, that wanted Martha to win. Yes, um, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm afraid that um, my view is the polar opposite from the last gentleman that called. Okay. Instead of <laughs> you be, not being conservative enough, I think you're too conservative. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, and that's what makes these calls wonderful. That's why I love my district. And that's what makes the world go round, too, is that we don't all think the same way. But I wanted to ask you, and and I know that this has probably been addressed before, and I just wasn't online to hear it or in a previous call, but I want to know what your opinion is about the investigations with President Trump and the ties to Russia. I'm very knowledgeable about this. I have not gone through mainstream media to find out anything. I'm digging and I'm reading I'm reading, and I'm reading, and I just I see lots of connections with Rex Tillerson, and I'm just, excuse me, I'm not even going to name everybody, because we don't have time. There are other people that want to ask questions, and I understand that, right. but I just want to know where you stand on this. I want to do what's right for America, not what's right for Russia. Right. Well, I, 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 Catherine, I've served in the military. I, I've thought I, I came through life in, in my younger days and college days where when uh, Russia, you know, was still a part of the old Soviet Union and uh, Vladimir Putin was cutting his teeth literally in the KGB. Right, uh, right. And, and not in a good way. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't. And, but I will also say this. I also have great trust in uh, our Senate and House Intelligence Committees. They're yes. bipartisan committees. I have a great deal of trust in that they can see everything that is going on they have they have top secret clearance they're looking into this and i have every right uh, and i know most of these guys i know the chairman's very well they are looking into this and um you know and anything else that needs to be done they're working with other agencies that need to be so I, i'm concerned as always you know with with russia or any any of our uh folks around the world who want to do i believe do us harm i believe vladimir putin has shown his true colors many times and yes. and what we're going to work on is is continuing that process and i believe that our committees will uh, you know, be a part of that, and we can look forward to it as well. But I, I'm, I'm trusting the process and the system, always holding it accountable, and um, we're going to see where it goes from there. But, Catherine, I appreciate you calling me, okay? And, and I appreciate your answer. Thank you very much, and you have, have a have good a, evening. You have a great night, too. Thanks a bunch. All right, next question is coming 
from? Let's see, I've got my clicker going here. There we go. Uh, it looks like Matt in Houston. How's everything down in Houston, Matt? Oh, just fine, sir. Good. Um, good to I talk to you. What's going on? Uh, I guess my question is, the thing with the health care is, y'all are only really going to get one shot at this. I mean, how are you going to – you're going to have to do what's called reconciliation, correct? That is that is one piece of the, it, yeah. Which is the bulk of the piece. But it's going to be a two- or three-stage bill. The Democrats are never going to help you all along with anything else. It's going to take 60 votes, just like you said a minute ago, to get the rest of this through. They are going to leave you all hanging out, and the media is yeah. going to jump on board. And, <laughs> and you all going to have pie all over your face. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's – unless it can all go through – I just don't. I just don't see how you're going to get the rest of it. As well, well here, that. The, and then, and yeah, that's, it's I do a great have question. A second, I do have a second part to this, which is uh, I understand the repeal side. I just don't understand the replace. Why can't you just not get rid of it? Why do you have to replace something? I just don't believe the federal government has any. I don't think it's not you. It's the federal government. Y'all don't have the ability to make one bill for everybody in America. It needs to be broken yeah. down by region. We need to have co-ops. We need to figure out our own system. And then that way, what works for our area is what's yeah. going to work for it. And then we can, you know, you're always going to have people that are going to need help. They're not going to produce enough or they're not going to be good well enough. You know, they're always going to need health care. And then that's where we as citizens turn around and give the help in hand. You know, with our tax yeah. dollars going to y'all, you block granite back down to take yeah. care of those people. Well, well Matt, you, you you brought up a great point. And, and look, here here's the biggest difference, and I, I need to go back and emphasize this for for listeners on the call. Uh, reconciliation is the is the package that we're dealing with. Reconciliation is being forced basically by the the Senate rules, and okay. where we are going through. If you remember, this is the way, frankly, that Obamacare part, uh, especially the spending side of it, was actually put through on reconciliation. What we're doing is we're doing what we did in 2015, the bill that the president uh, vetoed. All of that is in this bill, defunding Planned Parenthood, moving forward with the repeals of all the trillion dollars worth of taxes, uh, removing the mandates, removing the stuff that, we're, that we can move through. That takes care of the, the vast bulk of um, the, the process as we go through in reconciliation. That is the, the bulk. Now, there is another phase, and uh, the speaker and many of us have talked about this, and that is, if you remember in the uh, Obamacare, there's about 1,400 different places in which the Health and Human Services Secretary had the ability to shape markets, decide on what insurances were available, doing this by region, what you talked about. I don't think they ever thought Tom Price was going to be that uh, Health and Human Services Secretary. And he is a part, which, again, he can't, Communicate, you know, communicate with us. It's illegal for uh, for them to communicate uh, in ways that uh, would be uh, telegraphing because he's in such an integral part of that market. But that is part that the president and 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 Tom Price have said. That's the other big part that's going to be helping shape markets, allow insurance companies to come back into markets, offer more product, which will ro- lower costs ten to fifteen percent on premiums, and be able to offer a, a package of, of insurances so that everybody can have an opportunity to to purchase insurance. Now, the third aspect, which you talked about, the 60 vote, those are things that we would like to have, things that we, we believe and the president believes that we can actually make a case for. I don't think there are Democrats who would actually, you know, there's there's some that don't want to participate, and we get that, but there's about eight of them who have a real desire to be a part of, uh, should have a real desire to be in health care, especially one of them and a couple of them who are sitting in states that trump by one by more than 20 points. When you look at buying insurance across state lines, when you look at associated health plans where you can gather like-minded individuals and groups across the country to use the access of power of marketplace to drive down costs, those are the kind of ideas that can be passed on 60 vote, you know, uh, lit, you know, litigation reform, other things like that. That I believe at that point you do put to the Senate, and you then do use uh, the power of persuasion to get them to come along. They're insurance, they're issues that have been generally supported by bipartisan, but have no doubt to reshape the market to do what we're asking to do on the uh, process of health care can is is. Not just our reconciliation package, not just the repeal 
of, of the taxes and everything that you're going to find and the reshaping of Medicaid. But it is part of the Health and Human Services Secretary who is, was very instrumental in writing the plan that we currently have with the refundable tax credits and everything else. He was part of this. And then the president, you know, backing here and then working with a 60 vote in the Senate. You did bring up something interesting, though, in the end. You said talked about the regions. That's one of the regions in the block grant, what you talked about, is the, is the reshaping of Medicaid. All of these are going well, – and this is for some who are upset that it's not going away quick enough. All of the Medicaid expansion, the Obamacare Medicaid expansion, ends in two years. It's completely gone. That provides a transition market for those that have, have been a part of it, those in the ACA, on the exchanges, those co-ops, which are going bankrupt. That allows some transition um, that we've had last year in the 2015 bill as well. But what we're doing is we're reshaping an entitlement for the first time in over 20 years. Medicaid is being reshaped and re-envisioned so that it is not on the high-risk list of the General Accounting Office. That we're putting it back on a fiscal solvency with a per capita uh, approach, which gives us more defined benefit, if you would. It gives us the ability to control cost and let the states use that money in creative ways so that it can do what is best in Georgia as opposed to Indiana or New York or Texas or anywhere else. We can let the states begin to shape their health care system as close to the source as they can. That's what's going to make this process work. That's why there's three phases to this. There's not just one. And as opposed to the caller from earlier, we are doing what we promised. We're getting rid of, of Obamacare. And by the way, this is the president's uh, plan. As he tweeted out just the other day and said he, he is very proud of this plan, and he's proud to be it is part of his plan as well. So this is what we're working toward, and I hope that sort of gives you an overview of your questions. Yeah, the one thing I'm trying to get push to you, Y'all only get one shot at this if it's not all in there. I'm t I know you think you're going to get the other 60. You're going to get the 60 votes. Y'all get one well, shot, I'm telling you. Well, I, yeah, I, well, Matt, let me just say right. that there's – yeah, the nothing in the 60-vote column will be detrimental – to the effect of reinstituting a healthcare system that has affordable access to all. There's no piece in the 60 that would say if we can't get that piece passed, then all of this fails. The main pieces are within uh, in reconciliation and what the Health and Human Services Secretary is going to be doing. The other stuff are things that we believe and have said over time that we would like to see as part of the marketplace that will help considerably as we move forward. So the main bulk of this is going to come through reconciliation and, what, and the work with the administration. The 60 votes are things that would make it even better that we would like to see, but they're not going to deter and damage the, the product that we're putting out on these first part. Well, I do appreciate okay. it. And one thing, if you could just do something about Windstream, I would appreciate it. <laughs> they're horrible. They're horrible, man. Yeah, well, we're actually we we actually work on that as well as, as we go forward. So it will work it out. You take care. Have a great night. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, you know, one I want to also as we uh, go along in uh, this process and look at the uh, times day, I do want to have. Um, uh, you know, a time to remind you that if you want to come back uh, to or take a trip and or you have questions of our office that um, you would like to have, a, you may have uh, some issues with the Veterans Administration. You may have some issues with uh, your Medicare or other areas like that. We would be uh, glad to help with that. You just need to call our uh, local uh, office there in Gainesville. It's 770-297-3388, uh, 2973388 and um we would uh, love to have you uh help uh you know be a part in helping you solve those issues as you go forward. Um I wanted to go now. I think we've had some questions. It looks like we got some more questions on the Veterans Administration. In fact, I want to talk uh, it looks like we got a question from Stephen in Blairsville about uh the VA. Stephen, uh you got your question ready? Yes, sir. Um right. there was after all these waiting lists and people were, you know, found out uh, people dying on the waiting list and all the promises of people being held accountable. The only thing I ever heard anybody being held accountable for was getting paid vacation time while they were doing the investigation. Nobody got fired. Nobody got sent to jail. You know, what's up with that and the whole promising to revamp the VA health care system that's just like falling by the wayside. I haven't heard a thing about that. 
Well, it's something I actually had a meeting last week on a on a program that was going on at the uh Atlanta VA Medical Center on eye treatment and and it was we're working to to correct that. The biggest problem with the VA is this bloated bureaucracy. The biggest problem and, and the second biggest problem at the VA is leadership that won't take control and begin to to fix the problems that they can fix. The issue with uh, VA is not that they don't have enough money. The issue with the VA is is that they're not spending it properly, and we're not able to uh, work uh, through their employee personnel issues so that they can get rid of the employees that are not working properly and let the ones who are working properly, uh, you know, be able to continue to do a, a good job. I think the choice program is something that we've uh, got to fine tune. We've got to continue to tweak as we move forward so that we can get people. I believe they're best kept and. Um, is the is when we actually do this in a way in which the uh, veteran is able to get the help that they need. If they can't get to the VA or if it's, if it's too much of a time, they can actually get that done locally. And that's one of the things that uh, I would like to see you know done as we go forward uh, right. as we continue to work on that. So that's really where we're at. And it, but we're still working on it. Believe me, especially with you in Blairsville and you know for VA issues up in that part because you have North Carolina. You get, it's just a long way from from a different places, and, and you got your clinic up there. But they don't do everything that you need. So those are the right. kind of things we're going to continue to work on. And the choice card is is good for the most part. I've had some issues with that um, that I won't get into, but. Um, the, it's scheduled to expire in, I believe, a year or two, because that was only a temporary program. Yeah, well, it's coming back. We're going. You're going to see some stuff on choice this year that's going to hopefully tighten up those rules and, and move forward on it, so that that we'll be able to actually do this uh, this work that we're looking for. Okay, thank All you. Right, we do. All right, we do appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. All right, uh, let's go as we go down the list here. Uh, Mr. Thomas in Gainesville. Yes, uh, quick hey. question for you. Two two parts to the question on on the current health care bill. Mm-hmm. What provisions have been made, or have there been any? I suspect not to to remove the special class that Congress has reserved for itself and its staffers as being exempt from the existing health care legislation. And well, the, number the, one, they're not. So they're, they're my staff is under Obamacare right now, currently. Well. Is it is it by choice or is it by mandate? No, it's because because when the the bill was was put into play, the uh, Democrats who were in charge they exempted uh, leadership staff and committee staff, and then there was a motion I believe it was by and I may be wrong about this by but a senator or may have been Grassley I'm not sure who it was it said that all the uh, staffers up here uh, are to be covered under Obamacare. In fact, they took them off of the federal health care program and. My staff has uh, went to the Obamacare plan, so they've been in it, and they've been in it now for since uh, 2013. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, well, it, 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 well, what it did is it propped up Obamacare. Frankly, you put a, you put thirty, forty thousand relatively healthy twenty year olds on Obamacare, um, and it, and at the end of the day, what it did was was you know make the DC exchange one of the most profitable in the in the group because of the demographic that you put in it, and. Um, you know that's fine, and you know if that's what, you know that was what was done. But we're not we're treated no differently in that regard than anywhere else. And I've basically I've had my health care coverage under my wife for most of our marriage. She's a school teacher in Georgia, and now I pay we pay more for less coverage since the ACA was uh, the Obamacare came in. And so you know that's the part that, that bothered me the most about the Obamacare is that it was supposed to help those with no insurance and ended up basically destroying the work uh, you know the workplace health care. So that's terrible. But but uh, hopefully that answers your first part of your question. It is. It does. Absolutely. Um, I guess I want to revise that to three parts now. The second is is to commend you for the forum that you've created for the voters and actually reaching out to those of us who aren't able to come to the hometown forums and, and the other mm-hmm. things because of family commitments and everything else. So this is uh, by and far ex- exceptional. I don't know if this is nationwide or something, but uh, for me, no, we're enc- I'm encouraging everybody in my you know role as a vice chair of the Republican Conference. I'm encouraging all of our folks to take advantage of every possible outlet for them to um, you know be a part of. And I try to take a lot of times. I'll, and what I'm trying to do is take questions with people who may have a different opinion. We're wanting everybody's opinion heard, so we're continuing to work on this. It is. I mean, it is. What was your last, What was your third part? Formal. The third part, quickly. Um, what What are the opportunities for actually having? Um, reasonable or having some sort of uh, term limits 
actually installed. You know, they've been talking about that since the 101st, 102nd, probably even earlier than that, sessions of Congress to actually have term limits so we can shed the dead weight of Elijah Cummings and and all those like-minded, warped individuals that uh, are, are the parasites on, on, the, on the congressional process, is there any chance, you know, as, as badly as, as individuals such as myself would hate to see the patriots that, that, that are you and, and all the other good guys in Congress serving for all the right reasons to be removed from the process in, you know, in, in a six-year or four-year rotation, is there any chance that they're ever going to get term limits established, and what well, can you do to further that? Well, I think you know, as term limits, you know, it would have to be done through a constitutional amendment. I've always said if that was, you know came before and we wanted to send it to people, fine. Personally, and I and I think uh, were you part? Did you used to work on the Hill? Yes. Okay. You, you uh, who'd know, you work for? You know who I am. I know your last name. Your first. I don't recognize the voice. I'm sorry. No, no, no worries. I mean that. It's blindside question, and it's very uncomfortable. Well, it's not blindside because I'm against term limits, and I've, I've been a, I've been against term limits ever since that I have run for office. I've always run on it, and I've explained why. Because uh, if you, one of the things is issuing issue up here is 60 percent, uh, over 65 percent of the Republican conference has been here since 2010. Um, more than half of the Congress, uh, almost a third, by almost 65 to 70 percent of the entire conference has been um, uh, here since. Uh, in the last uh, six years to, uh, to eight years as well. The term limits is happening through the ballot box. And the other problem is if you, and, and by doing so, the, if you're turning uh, staff, you're turning congressmen over, one of the things you turn it over to is staff. And you turn it over to the uh, professional staff and the committees and other places to run the place. And I believe that as long as you have the, uh, you know, the, as long as that process is still in place, you need someone like myself and others who have to actually have to have their name on a ballot and have to actually go and do these town halls and do the the process of getting elected every two years. And that's where you know I, I think we just need to continue that process. So I've never been against term limits. Not a blind question to me. I've always said that you know if the people want to vote for it, fine. I think they're I think it's a bumper sticker answer that doesn't at the end of the day solve any problems. So, um, but we'll I, you know we'll continue to work on it. And you know one of the things also is 80 percent of the Georgia House and Senate. And, uh, and when I was down there, between 2001 and 2010, 85, 80 to 85% was a complete turnover in the Georgia House, all within any term limit bill I've ever seen. Um, so elections work as we go forward. So I appreciate it um, as we go forward. Uh, it, it, I think I got most of your questions. I appreciate it. We'll look forward to talking to you again, okay? Thank you so right. very much. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, we got a lot of questions online, and I know there's some folks that need to get on to other things now, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take as many as I possibly can um, here on some time as we've been going to, you know, almost 55 minutes now. Um, Ed in Dawsonville, what's the status of immigration reform? And, uh, you know, like I said, the immigration reform, the current president is looking to put that together. We started with a border security, and then we're going to take care of uh, working with those that are in, uh, you know, deporting those that are causing uh, problems in our uh, work and in our country, and then we're going to continue to also, as he said, deal compassionately with those that are here. Uh, Joan, I'm 100% behind the president. We've got a good stuff going as we get going um, to it. I'm getting um, questions tonight on, uh, also I think it's a, actually a state bill. I'm having to check on this uh, as we go for uh, tuition, um, uh, government, you know, vouchers. Those are the kind of things. I, I'm getting a question on those. I've got a couple of them I want to make sure. Uh, Janice Clark, uh, why can't you use uh, smaller pharmacies? Those are issues we've been dealing with, Janice, on the, uh, pharmacy benefit managers. We're going to continue to work on those. That is something that is very near to my heart. You're going to hear more as we go uh, back. Um, Charity and Coming, uh, we're working on opioid addiction. That's been a, a very high priority of mine up here. We passed, it, uh, last, uh, passed a lot of work last year on opioid addiction and also include some more stuff in 21st Century Cures. Uh, we're trying to get it back to medication that's not as addictive that provides the health and relief that you're uh, uh, looking at as you go forward. So, Charity, we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, Brad and uh, Gainesville, why are they dragging their feet on Trump's cabinet? Good question. Uh, eight of the original cabinet members of President Obama was approved on the uh, first day that he was in office, and the Democrats have chose to drag their feet um, on the as we go forward, Carol Lonegren up in Cornelia, what's the new thoughts health care plans affect on those on Medicare? Don't affect you, Carol. Uh, Medicare is not affected under the new HCA, uh, AHCA, the American Health uh, Care Act. 
Uh, mental health coverage, Heather and Cumming. Mental health coverage is going to be co covered, and it's not eliminating the requirement there. I know there's been some discussion. If you watched the hearings last night, I watched them for about 26 hours on and off. That, that was discussed by Dr. Tim Murphy and many overall mental health uh, issues are still going to be able to be treated, and those are going to be running in. Ed up in Rayburn Gap, we're working with the Postal Service. There's some good bills out there right now to uh, work forward. Uh, Pam and Blairsville, we've looked at uh, Rand Paul's health care plan. He's got some good points. A lot of those points are already made up in the bill that is coming through the House. I'm hopeful that, as the President said, that uh, Rand will come aboard and, and be a part of a repealing and replacing Obamacare in a way that uh, we can get past and move forward. Um, the Blairsville, uh, Rick Knox, uh, is the new health care plan going to not act not uh, going to be mandatory at participation? No. Uh, in fact, we, we don't believe that the government should be mandating this. We're going to give people access to uh, buy health care as they want. Um, David Jones, uh, we're not forcing people to buy anything. We've seen that work. It didn't work in the last seven years of Obamacare. Um, they're not going to be a burden on taxpayers because we're going to actually try and give them insurance that they can actually afford as opposed to what the health care bill, which was wanting to become a one-size-fit-all. Uh, Jeff and LJ, tax relief. Let's get through health care. We're going to be coming into tax the tax uh, reform. The president uh, will be looking at that. We've already been rolling out some ideas. We're looking forward uh, to go forward. Stephen in L up in Gilmer County, Dodd-Frank's coming through the financial services. We're going to be rolling a lot of that back here, uh, hopefully through uh, that bill in the next few weeks. Um, the Patrick and Jasper, we're looking to repeal Obamacare, take out the mandates, take out the taxes. We're going to co uh, be continuing that. We have a phase-out period for the Medicaid expansion and um, also weaning those off so that we're actually helping in Medicaid, the ones it was designed to, to hit, and that was the aged, blind, and disabled community. When is it, uh, Marsh and Monroe, when's it going to happen? Obamacare, get ready. Next two weeks you're going to see Obamacare repealed. It's going to be happening. Um, DOT widening of uh, Highway 5 in McKaysville. Barbara, I'd love for you to call our office, 770-297-3388. We'd love to talk to you about that as we go forward. Um, the, as we go, there's been a lot of ACA, you know, new health care questions. I've answered a lot of these questions under it um, as we go forward. We can continue this. Uh, because, oh, here's one from Brian and Nicholson. Uh, General Flynn, that investigation is ongoing, and um, we'll hopefully hear that as, as we go forward. Jerry and Tacoa, uh, South Carolina stations, uh, you don't want to be transferred to, to Georgia, then that's fine. I would recommend you getting in touch with your uh, local county commissions and folks and let them know how you uh, feel. We're encouraging work, Shirley, from Maysville for those in the Health Care Act. We're, in fact, uh, the provisions we're out there are actually encouraging people to work and not stay at home so that they can take advantages of uh, the process of getting affordable health care insurance as we go forward. Um, as we look at it, uh, John and Jasper, what's being done to increase competition for Internet services, we're looking to make sure that the federal dollars are not tied up into one company so that others can actually uh, be a part of uh, providing services to different areas. We're continuing to work uh, with different committees on that part um, as we go forward. Christopher Melton in uh, Claremont, uh, your health care will not go back to pre-ACA days because those days don't exist. And what we're going to be able to do is you'll be able to hopefully, you're going to be able to have affordable health care for your wife and children that you can actually afford and use and be a part of. Um, Henry and Clarksville, we reported it on repeal without replace. Why don't you do it now when we got to work on it? We have a chance now to actually repeal it and actually put back into place marketplace solutions that actually work and provide a, a transition from the terrible that was Obamacare to something that actually works. So, Henry, we're working on it to make it a better uh, system all the way around. And here's the choice. At this point in time, you also have to be reality. Um, is what the president said. He wants it repealed and replaced, and that's what we're working on and making sure that we have the 200 votes that we need to get that passed as we uh, go back. Um, again, I had several questions just like that. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, Marsha and uh, Ella J, I am voting to defund Planned Parenthood. If they want to raise money and do their uh, process, fine. They're not going to raise money and do, and from my opinion, and use that as a balance against abortions. Uh, that they want to do. Susan in Gainesville, why does the president uh, go about the cost of health care? Uh, will and disabled, we're actually trying to help folks in your condition because Medicaid was never intended to be for able-bodied adults. We're trying to make sure that those that need uh, those kind of uh, coverages can have those coverages and still get um, the, uh, the the coverage that they need as we go forward. Um, you know, 
uh, Mark and uh, coming, I think you know we're holding the, uh, the administration responsible and and looking at that as we as we go forward. Uh, and we're you know those are being investigated just as they are. Um, the uh, Thomas South Hall, why not repeal ACA because it caused litigation and is an entitlement? We are repealing the ACA. That's uh, you can watch that happen here in the next little bit. Uh, as we go forward, Senate fails. Uh, if the Senate, uh, Jonesy and his est in Easton Ollie, uh the Senate's not going to fail on uh, the health care bills coming through reconciliation. We're hopefully going to be getting our 51 votes as we go uh, to there. Uh, Joe and uh, Cumming, I just told you why I wanted to defund Planned Parenthood and ACA. For those who are Ken calling and trying the red herring of why is there a CBO score, look, the CBO score will come out when it comes to uh, the floor with the budget. Those numbers are not done until the, the bills are put together. That's the way it has always been done and will continue to uh, be done. Uh, Barry, thanks for telling me we're on the right course. We're still working hard and getting it out. Gail and Ella J, Social Security running out of money. We've got to look at Social Security in the long term. The way it's currently set up, we cannot uh, sustain it in years to come. There's going to have to be some serious look. Not touching anything that anybody currently gets in Social Security, but we've got to look at how we pay it as we uh, go in uh, to the next few years. So a lot of others. There's most of uh, you know folks who are wanting to um, you know ask some very similar questions as we've been looking at this. Uh, one last one it looks like here. Kevin, why are we still allowing 26-year-olds to fill dependence on the House plan? That is something that was beyond before even the uh, Obamacare plan. I would like to have uh, those under 26 to be able to have jobs and get affordable health care like we're going to be providing. So we get the economy moving. Uh, I hope that will just become a uh, less and less part of parents' plans. Folks, we've been going another hour here in the Ninth District of Georgia. We've had some agree. We've had some uh, agreement. We've had some time that we just get to talk and share. I'll always answer as many questions as we possibly can. Um, many of you tonight have gotten asked me questions, and we're going to continue to answer as I do at the end of these, trying to get as many questions as possible uh, answered. If you still have a question you would like for me or others to address in our office, <coughs> please leave a message after we uh, end the call tonight, or as always, please call 770-297-3388, or you can call our Washington, D.C. office. And I would encourage you, if you have policy questions, call our Washington, D.C. office, 202-225-9893. If you have questions or concerns about your benefits or needs uh, from the uh, VA, Social Security, Medicare, others, please call our district office. Again, it's a great privilege to serve uh, you as your ninth district uh, representative, and we'll continue uh, to work hard as best we can. Look forward to having you on our next call and look forward to seeing you uh, when I'm back in the district. Everybody have a great night. Take care.